time. Yeah. Um, I'd like to ask you, uh, you stated yesterday that um, the soul is supplying our bodies with energy. Sorry, the, the soul supplies, the soul the bodies supplies our bodies. Energy, yes. Energy. yes. Uh, so where do animals get their energy if they do not have a soul? They get their energy through from their spirit body. They get their energy from God, actually, from the universe. But when mankind is around, they also absorb the energy of mankind. So, so for animals, if we can uh, sort of describe it. Um, so an animal, you, let's, uh, let's draw a... I'm not very good at drawing animals, even <laughs> stick figures, right? So <laughs> Peter can do it for you. So there's the animal, right? <laughs> he has a he has a He's a he's a non identified animal. You wouldn't believe it, but I, I can be an artist sometimes, but you can't believe it in any <laughs> session. Um, now he has a spirit body as well. Um, and but the the way God has God has a number mm. of different energies that she delivers to the universe to maintain the universe and one of these energies is what you would sometimes or have heard about called pr pranic energy or the energy or life force based energy and animals basically um, they they have a spirit body so if I draw a similar body for the spirit for the spirit animal <laughs> embarrassment even further <laughs> right so there's the spirit so there's the physical body of the animal and this applies to an animal that has a central nervous system so the the living creatures that do not have central nervous systems do not have a spirit body they only exist in the physical world they don't actually exist in the spirit world because they cannot conduct the energy through the um, no they are all uh, all the living creatures that do not have a central nervous system are are created by God for the maintenance of the physical world so they are key key uh, components for the maintenance of the physical world for, for example most insects uh, do not have a central nervous system and and they are maintaining the physical world that is their purpose that's their purpose they have what you would classify as a collective consciousness if you like which is totally determined by the soul condition of mankind and if mankind doesn't exist on a planet then it's totally determined by the energy they receive from God if that makes sense so so the reality is that we have God supplying energy or you could say through her love supplying an energy that continues maintaining the life of these animals and um, but the way God's created it is here mankind is the way God's created it is these animals are very, very sensitive to mankind's uh, energy. Or you could say the best way to look at it is mankind's emotions projected at the animals. So that's why animals often reflect our emotional condition. This yeah. is why animals get sick and have injuries and uh, die. That's also why other, some animals eat other animals and so forth. A lot of this is all about mankind and mankind's collective emotional condition, mankind's soul condition, that it's out of harmony with love. So if mankind did not exist on the earth, the animals would all exist in peaceful coexistence with each other and in symbiotic harmony. When you add mankind to the picture, now the animals are feeling the soul condition of mankind and are feeling in particular the emotions of mankind not only the emotions of mankind projected at the animals but the emotions of mankind pr that are felt towards each other even so for example many males have a feeling on this planet most males have a feeling of competitiveness with other males for a woman's attention so so that is also then imposed upon the animals and the animals act out the competitive nature of males for a woman's attention by actually attacking other males in the animal kingdom for the sake of uh, copulating with the with the females right and so you see a lot of this stuff where a lot of these things where there's anger and rage for example in many males towards the female you will also see that reflected in the animal kingdom with specific animals and specific animals have a specific personal personality type and natures I mean as a group uh, and so they become very sensitive to certain types of emotions whereas other animals become sensitive to other types of emotions and um, so for example a cat becomes very sensitive to emotions uh, in in the owner 
So much so that any emotion in the owner of unworthiness, the cat will exploit. So um, do you understand what I mean by that? Like, so, so for example, this is the reason why most cats, and I'm including even the big cats, um, are exploitative in their nature of, with regard to their relationship with the, their owners. Generally, if they, if they have a relationship with a person, they are exploitative in their nature. In other words, they make demands upon the person. Um, they'll demand what they want to eat and they'll refuse. They'll snub their nose, as the saying goes, to anything that they don't want to eat, for example. And that's because they're very, very sensitive to the emotion in the human that the, the human will bend their will to suit. To suit. And so uh, an animal can help if you have a pet and that pet can help you heal a lot of emotions inside of yourself just by looking at the reflections. Um, the animals also have accidents and get sick based on the human's um, main emotional condition. Now if we have a domestic pet, so a cat or a dog or something like that, they are very sensitive to their particular owner. They're, they're sensitive mostly to the owner who either owns them or loves them the most and they will be sensitive as a, because of that to any of the unhealed emotions that are unloving in, the, in that owner and they will act out those emotions uh, through different interactions with other animals and with other people. So um, now when they pass, when the, when the physical body separates, and again the physical body separating is if, if it's dependent upon the owner, then what will happen is the owner can maintain the physical body of an animal if there is a, if there is a love based relationship Theoretically, it's possible for that animal to maintain its life on earth for the entire life of this owner. Right? So if the owner has cleared away all unloving emotions, all of their belief systems about death, all of their belief systems about longevity and so forth, then this animal is able to live as long as the owner will live on the planet. Uh, it's based on love, you said. That, uh, Sorry, lo it, it, on love. On love, on love yeah. 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 So the energy will flow to the animal also? Yes, uh, so the owner's energy now is also now sustaining the animal, in e other words. Energy of love, I mean. Okay. Yes, the energy yeah. of love, but if you think of it as the emotion of love, yeah. but it's not just the emotion of love, it's also, so we can have love for our animal, many people do, but they also have many unhealed emotions and belief systems that you must heal and, and remove from yourself if you want the animal to live as long as you do. <laughs> then but you describe the perfect uh, condition. In a perfect condition, the animal will live, will live as long as the human chooses to live, yes. If, if I feel love for my dog, but I'm holding on to huge emotions, <clears throat> say of resentment with men, excuse me, <clears throat> and this is a male dog, uh, then the dog is going to, even if it's a female dog, they'll start to reflect, that just as it affects my spirit body, begins to affect theirs as well, because I'm in connection with that animal. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, that... Um, sorry. Yep, go ahead. No, go. Uh, if uh, someone passes who is not in a very good condition, and also the spirit body of his dog, let's say, is not in a good condition, uh, while he is improving in the spirit world, uh, will also the spirit body of his yep. dog... Well, remember, this, the, the dog is receiving energy from two sources, not just from one. So it's receiving this uh, energy of life from God, and then it's also receiving the connectivity or the energy from the owner. And love will dictate how that dog responds. So if, this, if the owner is in very, very poor condition, the dog will not pass into the same location. So, so for instance, if the owner passed into the hills of the spirit world, the dog will not pass into that location. They will pass probably somewhere in the top of the first sphere at least in the spirit world. And they will basically be waiting around there until the owner reconnects with some of the emotions that it felt about the dog and so forth. And then as the owner progresses, the dog and, and the owner will probably meet up again at some point in the future. And then when they meet up, again, love will determine how, whether they stay together. Now, if there is a strong feeling of love from the owner to the animal, then the animal will continue just going wherever the, the owner goes through the spirit world. And there are animals all the way through the spirit world. There's also animals you can create in the spirit world. So you can, you can create and ask God to infuse the animal with a life force. And, uh, and you can create animals in the spirit world. And for that reason, there are very many much larger variety of animals in the spirit world than there are here on earth because you can actually create the, the spirit body of an animal while you're in the spirit world. Um, 
Can they enter the 22nd sphere? They can enter any dimension that is, of a, that is spiritual bodied in nature. So they cannot enter the 22nd sphere. They cannot enter the remember soul. Remember that's the soul that's the soul plane and these guys don't have a soul so. yeah. okay yeah. and yeah. by the time you reach that plane the soul union state um, you are able to interact with any other state anyway so you're able to interact with all other states so you're able to interact with the physical with the spirit world all the way through the dimensions and the soul world if you like where where you're in the soul union state but uh, but by that stage you you do not feel the necessity of having animals as a part at being joined with animals as you might do here on earth by that time you've sort of let go of a lot of that kind of thing in fact you can create by this stage you can create and manifest your own creations and so there's no need for you to uh, or, or desire for you to have a specific animal connected with you if that makes sense so you, it's the same actually with family by the time you reach the at one month state uh, with this, the eighth dimensional state um, you're not very you're not actually concerned about family at all it, you, there's no such thing as family actually at that point um, so um, you view the whole human race as your family just like God views all of the human race as her children and so you then view all of the human race as your brothers and sisters and you don't have a particular affinity to one member of that uh, of that human race unless there is a strong binding force other than family that draws you together to interact um, so for example um, my mother and father Joseph and Mary I've always had a strong connection with but not because they're my father and mother but rather because they when they particularly when they hit the spirit world they listened more to the divine love and divine truth and they were quite passionate in the growth of it in terms of themselves and so they were quite near where myself and Mary used to live in the spirit world and as a result of that you spend a lot of time with them but it's not because they're your mum and dad it's because they have the same desires the same passions and so forth 